hey really quickly you're going to get to the main part of the video and i promise it'll start and you'll get to watch it and it'll be great i originally had this concept planned out that i was going to be doing this video for five books but as time went on some things happened in my life some things happened with two of the books things just change so i'm only gonna be doing this video for three books i apologize so i in the video will talk about five like i'll keep referencing that i'm reading five but i'm going to be cutting out the two so you won't even know what they are i'll try to do as much editing as i can so that it's not jarring but i want to let you know beforehand going into this that the numbers just won't add up or make any sense so apologies continue Hi, welcome back to my channel and welcome to a new location. I'm babysitting at my brother's house and the baby just went down for a two hour nap. So um, I have nothing to do. Figured I would plan out and start my next video with you guys. So let's get going. I have decided to do another guess my rating challenge video. I absolutely love these, even though I feel like I technically fail every single time I do them. So in case you don't know how this video works, I make a prediction before I read the book. I make a prediction after one chapter. I make a prediction at the 50% mark and I let you know what I actually rated the book at the very end. And oftentimes I have fun. Oftentimes I don't have any fun at all. It is with great pleasure that I announce to you that today's guess my rating challenge will be in the category of YA fantasy books released in 2019. So I'm not doing any sequels, I'm not doing any continuations, and unfortunately I've already read a lot of YA fantasy that came out in 2019, but I was able to find five pretty popular books that I have not read and couldn't really tell you that much about honestly. Today is also going to be a little bit different because unfortunately I don't have my computer here with me, so normally I look on my computer and talk to my phone about these books. But um, like I said, don't have my computer, so I took notes on these books and I'm going to be trying to tell you what they are about without actually knowing what they're about and based on my really bad notes that I took about them. This will probably be really entertaining so stick around. So the first one is going to be Spin the Dawn and I am very interested in this book. I found that I absolutely love Asian representation in my YA fantasy. I feel like it's just so good and maybe that's just because it's not the same old same old but this book is Asian representation. I believe it is based off of Chinese myths, to be more specific. On Goodreads, it has a 4.06 out of 5 stars. The cover is absolutely gorgeous. It's this blue cover with this girl kind of like doing something crazy. I think there's like a bird somewhere on there. I think she has like a bow and arrow and there's some fabric coming off of her and it looks really good. So this book has been pitched to me as a Mulan, re Mulan so I just say Mulan Rouge. Mulan meets Project Runway where she is a girl who her father is like called to court and so she decides to go in his place and she disguises herself as a boy where she is told she must make three magical dresses one from the laughter of the sun one from the tears of the moon and one from something from the stars i think i might have gotten those mixed up but basically one from the sun moon and stars and then she finds out that it's a competition ah oh, yay competitions where she is one of 12 seamstresses that have been put up to this task and if she doesn't get to finish it i don't know what'll happen but i'm assuming something bad will happen based off of all of that i'm gonna predict that i will rate this book 4.5 out of 5 stars. I love competition. I love having fantasy stories in places that I'm not super familiar with. I honestly don't care whether or not she's disguised as a boy, but like, good for her. Let her do her thing. So the fourth book is one that I am looking forward to and I've been pushing off for a while for no reason other than I had other things I wanted to read more, and that is Crown of Feathers. And this book got a 4.14 rating on Goodreads. This is the story of two sisters who are ripped apart by a war. One of them decides to become a phoenix rider of old and one of them doesn't. One of them I think is like really controlling. This one also has a girl who's disguised as a boy. So I honestly don't know what happened in 2019 to make two people write basically the plot of Mulan into a book, but like I'm interested in this. So I predict that I'll rate this book a four out of five stars. I do think that this one has potential to be even better than I'm thinking, but there's just nothing in the summary that's like pulling me in. Oh my God, I forgot to tell you guys about the cover. This one has a girl on it and there's a phoenix behind her. 
and it's great. Now the fifth book that I'm going to be reading is one called Kingdom of Souls. This book is rated 3.75 on Goodreads. It is described, the main character's name is Ara. I wrote that down, don't know why, I didn't write down the names of the characters in any of the other books. She has a very powerful family, I think they're called like witch doctors, and um, she has no power. She's powerless. She's like, I got nothing. And so she thinks that she might want to get some power, maybe? Maybe? She's trying to get magic? Possibly? That might be what she's doing with her life. Children start disappearing near her, so she's investigating it. Basically, she's realizing that like, hey, power might not be what I want. Maybe I can find life without power. This is a horrible summary of a book I know nothing about. And then there's a demon king and she finds out that she must pay the ultimate price to get magic in order to defeat him. Now I always think of the ultimate price as um, death, but I don't think that's what the ultimate price is in this case, because what would be the point of getting magic if you die? Because then you couldn't use it to stop the demon king. So maybe it didn't say ultimate price. Anyways, so she's trying to decide whether or not she wants the magic. I personally think I might rate this book a four star, but I'm going to predict right now that I'm going to rate it a three star. And hopefully when I read the first chapter, I'm like, oh no, this is pretty good. And I'll raise it then. I, you know what, I'd rather predict low and guess and then get a higher rating later on than predict high and it gets lessened. Those are my predictions for those five books. I'm really excited to be reading them, but I will check back in with you guys after the first chapter of whichever book I start first. Okay, I started Crown of Feather and I'm gonna predict that it's gonna be a four star rating. I'm gonna save all of my commentary until later. Hello, so I forgot to stop and talk to you guys at 50%. So I am at 60% through with Crown of Feathers but I figure right now is better to stop and talk to you than never. So here we are talking about this awesome book. I am really enjoying it. Right now I'm going to predict that I will still rate it a four out of five star, but I just have this like gut feeling that the book is about to disappoint me in some major way and I can't like let go of that feeling. So I do think there's a chance that I end up rating it a 3.5 star, but I'm keeping my prediction at four stars and that's the plan. I am still really, really enjoying it. I like a lot of what they're doing. I like that it it feels like a YA book, but it has some differences from like traditional YA that I always see. I like the awkward moments. Um, they're not too awkward for me. I enjoy Veronica a lot. I think she's a great heroine and a great protagonist. I don't necessarily love the two boys who have perspectives. And honestly, I think that might be because the narrators who are narrating for the guys are very monotone and kind of annoying to listen to. So that could be the biggest part of that issue, but I'm liking it. So yeah, I'll let you know what happens when I finish it. I'm sorry if my eyes are red. I did the dumbass thing where I don't take off my makeup before I wash my face. So my eyes are red now. So I finished the the book I was reading, Finished Crown of Feathers, and I ended up rating it a four star. So this is the first time that every single time I've guessed my rating, it's actually been accurate to the end. Like every single time I guessed four star, and then I rated the book four stars, and I'm really proud of that. I got really close last time I did this challenge with The Raven Tower, but I slipped up at some point, and at one point I guessed something different. So yeah, I really, really enjoyed the book. I think that it stood out to me as something that felt very YA, but like not the traditional same old tropes that I see in YA. Like it felt unique and that was awesome because it was written in 2019 and I feel like we haven't had a unique book since like 2004. That's hyperbole. I love a lot of books that were written after 2004, but my point being the book was really good. I really liked a lot of what it had to say about power and the power struggle between men and women and how just because women would be in power doesn't mean that life would be dandy for everyone kind of a thing. Don't love what it had to say about domestic abuse slash manipulation. I first off was really upset that in the beginning of the book they had the two sisters be very black and white. So there was obviously one sister who was good and everything she did was perfect and everything about her was great. And then there was one sister who she was just bad. Every choice she made was the wrong choice. Every decision she made was 
awful and terrible and she was the villain and I didn't love that like I like when my characters have a range of grayness about them so I was a little bit frustrated with that and then maybe at around 90% into the book I was like oh the reason why the other sister is so dark and so black on the black and white scale I guess you could say is because she's supposed to be a representation of familial manipulation and how your family isn't always the best family for you to have and how sometimes you have to shut them out and you have to make your own family and that's awesome but then the author decided to go somewhere different with that and she kind of was like family is the people you don't have to choose and they're always there for you even if they're screw-ups you still love them and I was like sorry there's a hair on my face this girl is manipulative emotionally abusive I don't think there's ever a point where she was physically abusive but like she's awful she's awful and you're just gonna tell me to forget all of that mm, I don't think so I wasn't a huge fan of that and I do think that that will affect my view of the second book if I continue on with the second book which I think I will I enjoyed it enough that I think I would continue on and read the next one but it's gonna be a little bit because I have a lot more books to read in the meantime I did really love it though. Four out of five star is definitely what it deserved. I don't think it had enough specialness about it to be a five star read, but I do think that a lot of people who read it would really enjoy it. I'm a little bit confused about where it's supposed to take place though because it talks a lot about phoenixes, which I'm pretty sure I remember reading when I was a child originated in Asia possibly the Middle East, but I believe it was in Asia, maybe even Africa, but definitely not South America, which is where I think this book took place. Um, they kept mentioning like pack llamas, which are definitely something in South America and nowhere else in the world. So where is this book taking place? They also described a few of the people as having darker skin and then a few of the people having red hair and a few people having lighter skin so all of that could technically be in South America so maybe the author was just like what if phoenixes were in South America that'd be fun but I was confused because I feel like she didn't give me enough to actually place where this book was like supposed to be taking its reference from maybe it was just supposed to be a made-up place and I'm going too much into that but if you guys know anything please let me know. I'm moving on. I don't know which book I'm going to be reading next, but you will find out in about two seconds. Hi. So the next book I have decided to listen to is Kingdom of Souls, and I found out that it has a prologue and a chapter one, so the prologue was really short, and I concluded that I was going to read the prologue and chapter one for this first guess. I guess it's technically a second guess. Anyways, I'm really enjoying it, so I'm going to predict that I will rate this book four out of five stars okay so i am trying my absolute hardest not to dnf this book i am 40 percent through i'm gonna make my 50 percent guess right now and if i am able to continue on i will do my best but if you don't hear back in this video about this book i have dnf'd it so i'm going to guess that i will give it two stars at this point it's not bad it's not a bad idea the idea of the book is really good and i like what it's doing but it's so drawn out like i said i am at 40 percent, and honestly where i'm at right now should have been like the first 15 to 20 percent of the book there's so much extra and so much nonsense and she repeats like whole phrases and whole world building bits of information that were given and i just cannot stand it right now. I'm going to take some time and read something else for a little bit and see if I can convince myself to come back to this book but honestly I don't care at all about anything that's happening. Okay so I was being a little bit dramatic yesterday. I really wasn't enjoying the book and I had fully intended on DNFing it but I last night as I was going to sleep I realized you know what it's not that bad, I can make an attempt to finish it up. So I kind of skimmed the second half of the book and then whatever I felt like I was missing, I read a really in-depth summary online. So I am saying a finished 
no more souls. I decided this morning that the way I was rating and tracking my books wasn't the absolute best that it could be and I have recently decided that I wanted to redo my rating system. I had redone it, thought I liked the new system, and then last night when I was doing research on something else I came across the cowpile rating system which a lot of people talk about online and love and I found the original video and based on that I am going back and re-rating all of my books from 2020. I'm not gonna go back any farther, but yeah. Things might be a little bit different at the end of the year from what I've been saying in certain videos. Anyways, moving on. So I did that for Kingdom of Souls and then I also did it for Crown of Feathers. Since both of those are in this video, I decided to go back and re-look at Crown of Feathers too. So Kingdom of Souls, I ended up rating, where'd it go? So Kingdom of Souls ended up getting a two out of five star rating for me. And I think that that is pretty spot on. I honestly was so angry at it when I first finished that I was gonna give it a one star, but it doesn't deserve that. So overall, I would have to say I really liked the main protagonist. I thought she was pretty cool and decent. I liked that the culture of this world wasn't one I'm used to. It takes place in South or West African country. So that was really cool. I liked the magic. I didn't love how the magic was kind of wishy-washy and it didn't totally get explained to me. Like it kind of all depended on the gods deciding whether or not you should get magic and I don't love that. I also didn't love the main character's mom. She, and I don't think this is a spoiler, is kind of a big roadblock in the book and I thought that maybe if we had been given more reason to believe her to be this way instead of just like oh she had a troubling childhood and that's why she's a piece of shit. I think I would have liked her a lot better. I also think I would have liked to have seen her kind of struggle with this like horrible decision she's making along with loving her family and like how the two of them relate more to each other or how the two of them affect each other. I think that would have been really good. The writing wasn't bad. It wasn't necessarily memorable and I don't think that I am going to go out of my way to find other books written by this author but if I saw that she wrote something else that I was interested in I would definitely check it out. Very middle of the road there. The plot was all over the place. It really wasn't like a understandable straight line. It kind of seemed to be split up into chunks where like the first half of the book was like this one feeling and then the second half of the book matched something else and you really couldn't predict the second half of the book from just reading the first half of the book, which is why I'm really glad I decided to continue on and read the rest of it. I wasn't loving that. I didn't enjoy myself past the like 15-20% mark while reading this book. The first bit was really good. I was starting to understand the world. It was so beautiful and so colorful and I really really enjoyed just learning about that and the main character who is kind of the narrator goes into depth about the world that she lives in and that was great but once it got past what I kind of needed to know to like understand the story it just all felt like excess and she just kept telling me stuff about the world and I was sick and tired of her explaining how the world was to me so it was almost a negative because of how far she went into it but I also am going to give it some good points for what it gave me. That all averaged out to a two star rating and I love this. I love this rating system because now I can talk to you guys a little bit more about how I'm feeling without just being like, mm, it was okay. So I'm still playing with the number system and figuring it all out, but I'm happy with that. I'll check it again with you guys once I've read the next book. Okay, so I have officially started Spin the Dawn and I'm not loving it. It's told in first person, past tense perspective. So it just feels like every single thing about it is being like told to me from a bad storyteller and I don't love it. But I think that it's going to get better than the first chapter allowed it to be. So I'm going to guess three stars. Okay, so I made it to 50% of Spin the Dawn and I'm actually just like a little bit over 50%. I'm enjoying the book a lot more than I was after the first chapter, but I'm still not in love with it. I think at this point I will guess that I will rate the book 3.5 out of 5 stars, and I honestly don't see it ever getting above that, but I could see it getting less than that. I don't love any of the characters, and I'm not like super in love with the writing. It feels kind of juvenile to me, and some really weird illogical stuff keeps happening. For instance, this one thing that just happened was they keep mentioning how like 
in this land that only men can sew. Like it's a tra it's a task taught to men, but the main character Maya just ran into a traveling like band of people and one of the men basically traded them staying there for Maya to teach his wife how to sew. And I'm like, okay, none of the people here know that Maya is a girl. They think she's a boy, but like everyone in the land is saying things like, oh, only men can sew. So how come now she has to teach someone's wife to sew? So it's little things like that that kind of rub me wrong. And I'm not super into the plot. It's kind of felt disconnected. Like she didn't really start the main plot of this story that we're understanding where she has to sew the sun, the moon, and the stars until around the 40-45% mark. And then when she did start it, she's already done the sun, like she's captured the sun already. And it happened pretty much in two chapters, so it's moving really, really quickly. I think that the author, I think her name's Elizabeth, would have been more successful if she had split this series up into like a few smaller stories, like maybe do some novellas and have it, where she could have had the first competition with the 12 seamstresses, seamsters? I don't know the male word for seamstress. She could have had the 12 of them compete in the first one and then introduce the next task that Maya's gonna have to do at the end of book one. And then she could have had Maya trying to complete that task as book two. I don't really know what the sequel is actually about, so I'm sure she could have split that up into smaller, like 200 page books, and it would have been really, really good and way more enjoyable, and it would have made the plot feel less disjointed. But yeah, I don't hate it. I just. I'm not really attached to any part of it. I'm not attached to the world or the characters and I just feel like it could have been written better. But I also like it more than some other things I've read before. So that's why I'm leaning towards a 3.5. Hey, so I finished Spin the Dawn. It's still the same day. I know I'm wearing something different. I had to run out to the store and earlier I was wearing my pajamas and I didn't want to wear those. So I finished the book and I am, um, I really regret how little I liked this book. I ended up rating it 2.5 out of 5 stars because it just was weak in too many areas. Like I really really wanted to like it because the world was absolutely fantastic and really amazing and really interesting but everything else about the book was meh. It was like 4 or 5 out of 10 maybe at the most. The characters didn't hook me. I didn't really like any of them. I didn't dislike them, but they just didn't entice me in any way at all. The romance was unbelievable and fast and boring, honestly, and I just couldn't stand it. The plot was all over the place and mangled, and I really think it would have benefited from being a couple of shorter stories, like I said earlier. The writing wasn't super fantastic. I think that for YA fantasy, it was pretty average, but for all books ever written, kind of low, which is unfortunate. I feel that way, but I feel that way a lot about YA fantasy, so nothing new. The logic of the world was mess. It was just a mess. I talked about that earlier, so I won't bring it up again. My enjoyment was pretty low. It started out really bad, and then it got higher and then the second half of the book I just didn't care. I, I didn't. I just kind of wanted it to end honestly so that's how that looks and I don't think I would ever reread this book and I really really don't think I will ever continue on to the next one. So all of that together equals a 2.5. Hello and welcome to the final wrap up of this video. Like I stated earlier, I set out to read five books. I was actually able to successfully read three of them. And out of those three, I rated one of them a four star, which is kind of feathers. I really enjoyed it. I rated one of them a 2.5, which was Spin the Dawn. Didn't love it. And then I rated another one two stars, Kingdom of Souls. Didn't like it at all. Don't recommend that book. Kind of regret reading it apologies. I hope you enjoyed this video. I left a little chunk of my original ending right here at the end so you can watch that and finish up this video and I hope you don't mind that I actually filmed this video a while a while ago. I 
think it might have been in April when I first started filming this video and it's only coming out now, so I apologize for that. But I've been having so many other videos I wanted to post that I've been pushing this one off. Enjoy it now. I just wanna let you know though that this, a lot of this filming is really, really old. I have reanalyzed this whole entire video idea. I really love the concept behind the Guess My Rating Challenge videos, but I think I need to redo them and I've thought of a new format for them. So I'm gonna be trying it out in a video series that'll be coming out very shortly and seeing if that one works a little bit better for me. We're not gonna be doing any more Guess My Rating Challenge videos for possibly ever. This could be the last one because I'm just not happy. Like I said, let me know down below if you've read any of these books. I'd love to talk to you about them. Um, I apologize once again about the two that I wasn't able to read. I don't remember how my outro goes, but until next time, I'll talk to you all in the comments. Bye. Mm -hmm.